Welcome to another episode of Worthy of Rescue. In these podcasts, I try to bring a voice of truth to you from the biblical word of God. Those of you who are broken, who are weary, who are on the verge of hopelessness, stay tuned and listen as I bring a word forth today for you. I want to speak to you about Jesus interacting with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes of his day. In the Gospel of Matthew, that generation is not any different than the generation that we have here today in the world. They kept seeking signs from Jesus. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered him, saying, Master, we would seek a sign from you. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men in Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Most of you know the story of Jonah because he failed to heed God's voice and go preach repentance in the city of Nineveh. He was basically swallowed by a well in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. But God had mercy on him and heard his cry. So when he was thrown up onto the land, he went forth and did preach in Nineveh. They repented in sackcloth and ashes. They didn't need a sign. They just needed a word from God. So what about your life? Do you seek a sign? Let's look at another part in Matthew. In Matthew 16, the Pharisees and Sadducees again demanded a sign from him. So let's read in verse 1. And the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test him, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. Do you see that in his ministry it's recorded at least twice just in the Gospel of Matthew that this generation that surrounded him demanded signs from him? Is it any different in your life or mine today? Let's go into the Old Testament and let's listen to the heart of Isaiah. In chapter 8 and verse 18, he tells them, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and portents, in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells on Mount Zion. That was in the ESV. And if you read it in the King James, it declares that I and the children the Lord has given me are signs and wonders or symbols in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Oh, my dear listener, you and I, we are the signs and wonders here on the earth. Our lives before Christ, BC, were broken and desolate whether it was from abuse done towards us or the voices from our youth, or whether we walked in a wilderness period in addiction and adultery and fornication, bound to other idols that we worshiped or idols that we created out of our own hands or making, or even when we set ourselves up as God. Oh, but after Christ, that's his power. We are signs and wonders in the earth. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, Paul was telling us. So my dear listeners, I pray that you walk in the fullness and boldness today, that you are a sign and wonder. You who are redeemed by Christ and his blood are a sign and wonder in the land where you are. Go forth today with your voice, with your eyes, with your hands, and with your feet. Boldly preach the gospel, the kingdom of God, that Christ was dead in the earth, the belly of the earth for full three days and three nights. But the power of the living God who created the heavens and the earth, the universe and all that is seen and unseen, he, by his power, resurrected Christ from the dead, resurrected him from the grave, 
Christ is the firstborn of many brethren in that new resurrected body. He's fully God, fully man in a body that will never, never be destroyed. You and I too will have that resurrected body when Christ comes for us. So remember, those of you who are still broken and weary, those of you who don't know the power of God in your life, the God who created you, the King of the universe is pursuing you. You who are made in his image, in the image of God, he made you, either male or female, he made you. You are worthy of his rescue because he sent his son to die for your sins, to reconcile you to God for eternity. Will you repent and become a child of God? I pray that you do today. I pray that you take this to heart. For the day is close at hand that Christ will return. The world is getting darker. Today is the day of your salvation. So repent. Turn away from your wicked ways and let God have control over your life. You can find the salvation message on my website, M-A-W-O-O-T-T-O-N.com, under salvation. Remember, you are worthy of rescue and you are pursued by God.